Peter and Jude were writing warnings against false teachers who, whose intent is to lead us astray. The word scoffer refers to one who denies the truth of scripture and entices others to go along with him. One of the big things now is Jesus is not coming. A lot of people want to say that. How is it possible for Jesus to come? That looks impossible for scientists and astrophysicists and all these people to say, how could he possibly come? How could this possibly happen? Well, I want to go back a little bit, if you don't mind, for a minute and just remind you that people said that we could never do a heart transplant. And if you remember, Dr. Christian Barnard did it. Also, I remember that it was said that we could not put a man on the moon. Uh, Neil Armstrong proved that incorrect. And what about there'll never be a black president? Oh yes, there was one, wasn't there? And so if human beings can do this, if human beings can do this, you gonna tell me that Jesus, that who is divine, can't come in the clouds of glory. And so I'm encouraging you today to tell people that Jesus is coming. It doesn't make any difference what they think or what, what that man Neil Tyson DeGrasse says. It doesn't make any difference what any scientist, astrophysicist, or anybody else says, astrologers. He is coming. And he's coming back for us. In fact, he wants to come back for everybody if we will allow if we will allow him to. And so today I encourage you to keep telling people about Jesus coming back. All right? Because it's one of the most important things that people can ever know today. We have a few announcements this morning. First of all, there will be a church business meeting tonight at 8:30. We will also, we'd like you to stay after church if possible to please uh, do a couple of transfers of membership. We need to do those, make sure that uh, it's Sister Castro and Sister Yvonne Johnson. We need to do both of those transfers of membership today. This is something that they've been asked to share from the conference. Good morning. Please share these important updates with your congregation about what's happening with our young people at camp meeting. On Friday, June 3rd of camp meeting, we will have an outdoor fun day with the youth that include games, competition, and waterworks. Then that evening, we will have Pastor Eli Johnson as our psalmist and Pastor Marcus Hayes as our speaker. Also, our youth summit will be held July 21st to the 24th in St. Louis, Missouri. Pastor B.C. Nawade will be our speaker for the weekend and national recording artist Kalante Gavin will sing for a concert that Sabbath evening. It's going to be a dynamic experience. So let's begin to promote now to get our young people registered. Thank you and have a blessed Sabbath. And that's from our president, Elder Roger Bernard. You know, we've been talking about things that couldn't be done. I remember watching something in seeing that Mr. Hitler said that the master race was going to dominate the Olympics in the 1930s. He had not known Jesse Owens. And Jesse went on to win three or four Olympic gold and the man wouldn't even shake his hand. In fact, he didn't even come to the ceremony. But you know something, that was all right. Because the same thing is gonna to happen to all of us. People are not going to want to acknowledge our love for Christ. Yeah. They're gonna say it was something else, somebody else did something, some, you know. I remember I was at school and somebody asked me, I said, I said, it's the Lord who helps me. And the people busted out laughing. I was like, why are they laughing? It was the Lord, okay? And I find that when I pray, before I go to school, when I'm in school, and after school, God works things out, okay? And if you will start to pray more and more and more, I'm not talking about just these, this little, dear Lord, da, 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 and it's over. I'm talking about taking some real time with God. Sometimes God wakes us up in the middle of the night 
That's maybe your call to prayer. Sometimes God wakes up at five o'clock in the morning and anybody knows me knows I like to sleep. <laughs> but if I'm sleepy, I'll ask, I'll ask the Holy Spirit. I said, wake me up so I can pray. Wake me up. Shake me up so I can give God the glory. And so I'm coming to you this morning asking you to please come down to the front and pray and ask God to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. This is not an easy life. Life is hard. The man who wrote The Road Less Traveled said, life is hard. And once you get over that, you, you're OK. <laughs> once you figure out life is going to be hard, OK? Jesus never promised you a rose garden. But he did promise that if you will come to him, if you will make your peace calling election sure, if you will do what he asks you to do, things will change in your life. I can tell you from experience that God changes things. And so I ask you now to listen to the choir for a few moments, and then I will pray. And like the song says, I need you. Oh, Lord, I need you. Sing one more time, please. I need you. first. How awesome you are. How astounding. How outstanding you are. Creator of every universe. Every galaxy. Every nebula. Everything belongs to you. Woo! Glory. Hallelujah to your holy name. The Bible says hallelujah. The Lord God omnipotent reign. That means there is no weakness in you at all. No one can hinder you. Stop you. Block you. Because you have promised in your word that anything we ask in your name believing we can have. And so we give glory to you today. But our glory is more for Jesus Christ, who died to save us, to, to save us from sin, self, and Satan, Lord. That's what you have done. We learned today that the sacrifice that Abraham made with Isaac was just a portent of things to come about what was going to happen to you. You would become the sacrifice. You would take on the beating, the spitting, the everything that they could throw at you. You took it because you love me. You love us. You care for us. There is no, there is no other person on this world who cares for us like you do. And so the Bible says, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. So here we are. Now, Lord, sin has interrupted our situation with you. We sometimes do not behave like Christians. We don't think like Christians. We don't talk like Christians. We go have our own way. We're like the people in Judges. Everybody did what they thought was right. But we know we're not correct. And so we come to you now asking to forgive us and also to change us. We know that transformation, sanctification is not an easy process, but it's a process. And the Bible, and the, my people told me that the process is more in, important than the product. Yes, yes. That we need to be processing through this life, transforming, seeing you do for us what we can't do for ourselves, changing in ways that we never thought we could change. Because of you, because of your power and your glory, because of your Holy Spirit. So we thank you today for that. Now, Lord, we bring our request to you, especially about Sister Stewart. We know she's in hospice now. But we ask that you will be with her. 
and that as Kenny and lovely and brother Stuart walk this last mile with her, that she will know she is loved and cared for. Lord, we're concerned about what happened in Buffalo, that that young man took the life of those people for no other reason that they were African-American. We understand that there is racism and bigotry that is running like a thread through this country. But we are asking you, would you please deliver us from evil and lead us not into temptation. Help us to know that we can't get anywhere as a country if we are hating each other. The Bible says that there be no strife between us, but we be brethren. We ask that you will please take care of Danina Padilla. We ask that you would please take care of Barbara and George King. Take care of the Waters family as they go to Sharon. Please bless us indeed, Lord. Bless us. Bless us so we can bless others. And I ask that the Holy Spirit will be given in quadruple here today. I also ask that everybody here be given wisdom, spiritual discernment, a deep desire for holiness, and a deep love for others. Please, Jesus, please. Now we come to you with Elder Paris's name, knowing that he is a warrior for you. He loves you. He lifts you up. And we ask that he, as he lifts you up today, we will see you high and lifted up in your train filling the temple. And that like Isaiah, we will say, woe is me. But understand that when you say, who will go for me? We'll say, here am I, send me. Now take care of us and guide us. Use us, Lord. This world is coming to an end. There's an expiration date on this world. And we understand that. We want to be ready when you come, no matter what. We want to see you in peace. We want to say, lo, this is our God. He has come to save us. We're here. All praise, honor, and glory be unto you. Keep us from falling. In the worthy, precious, and magnificent name of Jesus, we pray. Let everyone say, Amen. Amen. Like I said last week, I know inflation's on the rise. I see the $4.09 gas. But the Bible tells me in everything giving thanks. But this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So don't be going, oh, I don't know. Uh -uh. Praise God. And when you can fill up that tank, praise God. All right? Like I said, when I bought that $2 loaf of bread and it turned into $4 the last time, I said, thank you, Jesus, and grabbed the bread and kept on walking. Because if you praise him, what he understands is that he's more important than the gas, the bread, the anything. All right? And so we are so grateful that many of you are continuing to give to the Lord. You're not letting this inflation mess with your tithes and offerings. All right? I wish I could tell you that everything's going to turn out all right and everything's going to be great. It may not. So what? You got God. You got God. You got everything. All right? And he will turn things around. So if you would like to give your tithe by cash app and offering by tithe, uh, cash app, if you'd like to give it by e-adventist giving, 3725 Ames is the address of the church. And brother... Edward Johnson will come and get your money if you want to give it to him in that way, all right? We are so grateful to all of you who give every single month or every single week or bi-weekly. We cannot thank you enough. What can we, what else can we do, 
All right. And I want to thank all of you, too, for supporting the pantry and the thrift store. Thank you for your gifts for over there also. You don't know how many people. Sometimes we have 30 or 40 families that we are impacting. People need us, and we need them too. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you are the ones who give us strength to get well. Now lead, guide, guard, and direct us, especially in our finances, Lord, especially there, that we will never, ever cheat you or not give you everything that you are rightfully due. Take care of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We'll now have a selection by our choir. Wow. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. I'm thankful to God for breathing this morning. Just, 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 just breathing. And sister said something very profound. And that is, if Jesus doesn't return, we're all in trouble. Amen. We all in trouble. I certainly don't want to miss J. Sam this morning. Brother, we want to thank you for coming in this morning to worship Amen. with us. Amen. You know, the Lord said, be careful yes. to entertain strangers because yes. you never know who they are, who yes. the Lord sent. So we thank you for being with us this morning, brother. Yes. And now we want to go to the word, Matthew chapter 25. And the elder has led me to read 14 through 17, if I'm correct. Matthew chapter 25. In verses 14 through 17, it reads as follows. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his, emphasis on his goods, and unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. The final verse. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. May God add a tremendous blessing to the reader, to the hearer, and to the doers of his word as servants. Thank you so much. You may be seated. It's wonderful when a church can have more than one pastor. We have more than one pastor. We have Elder Bernard. We have Elder Josiah Crack, uh, well, Christian Josiah, well, well, and we have Elder Paris. Amen. What church could ask for more? Well, okay. okay. We are so happy that Elder Paris and his wife are with us today. Yeah. Sister Paris, will you stand up, please? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So glad that you're here. He will bring us the word again. Now I have I have asked Elder Paris to please stay within the confines of the camera. Okay. And he said, he said. I'll think about it. <laughs> Consequently, we are so glad to have him here today. And after the choir sings, the next voice you're going to hear is that of Mark Paris, who is assistant to the president of the Central States Conference of Seventh Day Adventists. <laughs> Oh, 
Jesus just a little bit. Amen. Also, we'll understand what God wants us to do. Lord, we're so, we're so thankful for this opportunity to preach your word. Yes. You already know, Lord, that I'm only your vessel. Uh, you're the preacher. But we're asking, Lord, that you would talk to us, draw us closer to you, give us a grander understanding of what you would have us to do, where you would have us to go by your grace. We will follow your will. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Maybe see it. I'm, I'm, I'm starting by making sure that I learn how to stay in the parameters. Uh, I, I'm not used to that. I'm used to walking. Uh, so I like to walk my talk. Is that all right? But we're not going to do it today. We're going to do exactly what you have told me to do. We will follow you. We will follow you and we will obey. It's just good to be back. It's just good to be back. I, 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 I miss my church. Uh, it's, it's nothing like being in the pulpit, even though uh, we're in the office. Really, our best things that we can do is be in the pulpit. We, we, we like to um, talk about the word. We like to kind of break it down and give us some understandings. And so we're grateful for that. But today I'm going to just try to 
remember that I have to stay within the parameters. <laughs> I can move. <laughs> God's been good, and I, it's just good to be back and see uh, the church, see my church by God's grace. And I know that you all have been praying for me. Uh, you've been praying. We've been praying for you. We're, we're, we're asking that you continue to uh, let God do what He needs to do through us. We, we, you know, I don't know about you, but all of us, I know that, you know, the time we've known each other that we've all gone through some tough stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, and, and, and God has been good uh, during, the, during the virus. I thought I got it. I don't, I, all I know is I was sick for four, four weeks. Uh, but I said, no, it's not my time yet, God. So go ahead and let me live through this. Uh, pandemic uh, come on, and God has been that yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, God has been that good to me and I'm so grateful. Um, also, I, I just want to make sure I'm just, I'm just so grateful for my wife. Um, she is a jewel. Uh, she is a uh, very talented. Uh, she's very beautiful uh, come on, uh, and she's mine. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just so grateful that gives me the power to well, preach. Well, all right. And uh, her and Jesus is first, uh, and then, yeah. then, then she's second. Well, Jesus and Kelly yeah. by his grace. So let, let's let's get into the word. Let's yeah. get into the word. Yeah. Uh, we know uh, that as we're in this pandemic that we can't preach too long. We understand that. So we, we need to get right into the word. Give you something to eat. Uh, we're gonna make it, it. It will be a meal. A meal. Right. We'll give you not just crackers or anything. We're gonna give you a meal. Of God's grace. Um, but let's 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 this 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 text Matthew 25, 14 through thirty. Um, for it is as if a man was going on a journey, and he summoned his slaves and and trusted them with his property. Yes, to one he gave five talents, to another he gave two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Hmm. Mercy, Lord, 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 yeah. Jesus. Yeah. By your grace, just asking again, we just, we just want you to Give this word to us clearly yes, sir. so we know exactly what to do. By your grace, we pray in Jesus' name before it's safe. Mm. Mm. I, I, I don't know about you, but I, I love the stories that God puts in the Bible. Yes, sir. Nothing like it. Mm -hmm. but, but, the, but they're not just words just to be words. They're words to give us understanding. God takes several kind of angles to make sure we understand. I better get back in here, Rich. God give us some anger. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to obey. I'm trying to trust and obey. But, 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 but God gives us each different gifts. Um, everybody has one, at least. Some have several gifts. Uh, God gives it to the people He knows that they need. How how many gifts? How however many gifts they use or need, God gives that to them. Yes. Uh, in this story, there are, are, are the, the the ones who received the gifts was five and 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 then two and then one. Mm -hmm. Now, when I first looked at this some time ago, it it seemed a little unfair. Some people were given more uh -huh. gifts well, yeah. than others. Uh -huh. I, you know, it almost says that you are a, a, a notch down from yeah. the person who's a notch up. You know, I, I, I had to understand this thing because yeah. I said, God, you're yeah. being unfair here. She can get yeah. three and I can get one. Yeah. In, in other words, you really said, I, I can only trust you with one. Yeah. But, but that was the various different ways that God planned
commanded so that he could give them uh, the, the, the five and the, and the two, and then one got the one. Uh, this story is so, um, I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's marvelous. When you really look at this story and you really get down to it, it's really saying a lot more than it seems on the, on the, on the top. Man. The one received five talents. The other received two. And another one won, each according to his ability. Now, again, that's, that's sometimes, what are you saying? You're saying that uh, I don't have as much ability as the next person? All I'm saying is, I know when you were born what you could handle. That, that's, that's what I do know. Uh -huh. okay. And so God says, I expect you to use the talent or talents yes, that I give you. Yes, I, I've already evaluated you, with you. Even before you were born, I knew exactly what you could do. Uh, this is not saying somebody's lesser. So somebody's underneath. But what it says is God gives everybody talents. And he expects you to use it. And he gives it to you according to how he knows how much you can bear. And so don't be jealous of the person who maybe have, has more than you have. Because you are struggling just on having your one thing. You ought to be glad God gave you that alone. So it starts as the it starts as those who are looking for are wondering about are trying to find exactly what is my niche. But all I'm saying at the beginning is do and take what God gives you. Amen. Don't don't worry about your next door neighbor. I mean, you, you work. I mean, I mean, you can, you know, be nice to that person. But you ought to understand what's going on first with you, what God is giving you to do. And you ought to stick to that, not your next door neighbor. Why does he have? No, I'm not asking why is he have to. I'll tell you what, if, you get, if, the, if the amount you get is the amount you got to do to deal with. See, see, if God gave you 10, You'd be wondering, God, why, why, you, why do you wear me down on 10 <laughs> talents? 10 talents? Yes, I do. God knows exactly how much you can bear. God understands you. Before you were born, God knew what you could handle. And so God gives you just enough. So stop complaining. Thank you. So he gave them, he gave them different amounts of talents. And he says, the, the one who received it, the five, he, he, he took his five and doubled it. Uh, the one who took two, he took two and doubled it. Then the one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded them. So they began to trade all of all them and made five more talents. Ooh. Can, can I just? Yeah, yeah, take it down. You just can't step. When, you, when God has called you, you just can't step away and say, I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. Yeah. When God calls you, you do it the way God wants you to do it, and you do how much God wants you to do. See, see, something happens if you don't do that. It's, see, see, because God gives, if God gives you a directive, he expects you to use that directive. Okay. The same way, the one who had two talents, he made two more talents. So once I had five, he made five more. The one who had two, uh -huh. he made two more, two okay. more. And then we have a problem here. Oh, okay. 
The five doubled his. He made another five. The two said, instead of saying, why do you only give me this? And the two took it and made it four. And the next one who took it, who had one, he, instead of using it, hides it. Now, number one, number one, we forget. It belongs to God. Everything we have really belongs to God. God, yes, gives us it. God allows us to have stuff. But God, all the stuff that you have really is God. And what God is saying is if you have my stuff, you better use it right. Don't you dare take my stuff and put it somewhere and hide it. I gave you my stuff to make more stuff. That, that, that just talks to me about evangelism. Sometimes we, I, and I know I, 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 I grew up, you know, not feeling, you know, like I was as good as other people. Uh, you know, my 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 siblings had to say, "What's the matter? He's a, he's this is bad. He's he's not good. He's not a good child." <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> But, but 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 I realized when God gave me the gifts. In fact, in fact, I ran to get out of. I didn't want to come to ministry. I didn't. I didn't want to do ministry. I ran out. I told you, I ran out. I ran, I ran away, like Jonah. But see, when God says you are you when you are born, God has already said to you. God, God has already done for you. He's already he's already put in place. The place and, the, and what he wants you to do. Yeah. God's already put that there. Yeah. But sometimes, like in this case, the person said, well, I tell you what, what I'm going to do with my talent, I'm going to bury it because I at least won't lose it. <laughs> <laughs> Not logical. I, 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 I at least won't lose it. No, no, you, you know, you are, you are. If you, you put in the, you, that's what you're doing. You're losing it. It's not working. It's not. You're not doing anything with it. Well, you're not helping somebody else. Yeah, come on, reach up. That's it. Like it is a who? Dude, he's right. That, that means everybody yeah. has a gift. Yeah. And not several gifts. Well, and what God expects me to do, if, if, if He expects me to take my gifts and to double them. Yeah. That means I'm talking to other people yeah. so that they too then become, yeah. as it were, they, yeah. be, they become somebody who, who moves for Jesus. Yeah. They, they, there's somebody who tells others about who Jesus is. Yeah. I, one, one thing I, 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 I loved about, about my, my dad, he's a literature evangelist. Yes, sir. Yeah. But, but technically, technically came off the street. Well, amen. Mama was too busy doing her jazz stuff. She, she was a jazz player. So, so, so the son had to basically, so, so my father had to basically raise himself. But, but, but what, what, what really gripped me is when, because by the time I was born, he was in the church. Praise the Lord. I don't know if I wanted to say anything else than that. <laughs> so great. <laughs> but my but my dad took up literal evangelism. Uh -huh. Now now I'm, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I'm glad he did, but then in some respects at that time I wasn't glad he did because he he you know he used to if people needed something he would give it to them instead of make make them pay for it. But I I, I understand then what I understand now that 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 what was more important than anything else was that somebody else was saved even if it means that I can't say uh, he would give it to them a book because he knew really what he was supposed to do was to bring people to Jesus if it means I have to pay for these books for them I'll pay those books for them and because of what my father did a lot of people came into the church <laughs> So God gives you a gift. And what God wants you to do with that gift is to use that gift. And so God makes sure you 
use that gifts. And it says, after a long time, the master of those uh, slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received five talents came forward, uh, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you, you, you're handed over to me five talents. I have made five more. All that God wants us to do is to do his will by taking what we already have and using them to make sure we bring people to Christ. The two of the three, what I never, I never, I never understood it a lot. My, my, my dad, my dad loved to to to, to make sure he he uh, had books and that he. But 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 my 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 dad would give them the books free. I said I can understand this. Why do you give books free? I mean, do you know how much those books cost at that time? <laughs> I didn't. It it took me some time to really know Jesus to really understand that what was important, what my father was concerned about, is bringing others to Jesus, not just making a buck. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I I never knew that thing. That's why. I, that's why I, I ran from uh, come coming into ministry. I ran from ministry. I ran from ministry because I said, uh, you know, I, I watched my dad and he hardly made any money. Why did I want to go to ministry? <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 I, but I forget the, 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 the part, the, part the, the, the issue wasn't that I, I needed to make money. The issue was I needed to save soul. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. And so when Jesus says in this context, he says, I given you talents, not just so you can have money, not just so you can have assets. I give you talents so you can bring somebody else to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. I don't care about anything else. Yeah. I, I, I came to the point finally, when, after I was a car wreck and all that kind of stuff, I finally came to the point and said, Lord, I'll stop. I'm going to stop running. I was running just like you. <laughs> Literally. Well, but I'm so grateful God called me to ministry. You see, you know, some of y'all don't have to, you know, go into ministry because, you know, when, when you're in ministry, you know, you hear a lot about, you hear a lot about the Bible. Mm -hmm. God puts you in a place where you're always hearing it because I needed it. I was that messed up. I needed it. And so, and so God, so, so some of you, God, don't, 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 don't have, he doesn't have to put you in ministry. But me, he had to put me in ministry. Mm -hmm. So, so that I can learn and do what God would want me to learn and do. I would have been lost if I wasn't a minister. Now, now I'm not saying everybody has to be a ministry, no. But I'm saying this. Everybody ought to be bringing somebody to Jesus. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Oh, yeah. I'm not yes, saying, I, I, just, I need to tell somebody about yes, Jesus. Uh -huh. I, I just need to tell them what God has done for me. I want them to know the ghetto I came from. I, I, I want to know that I was a person who didn't have a whole lot of money, but by God's grace, God has said, will I not, will I not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing so you won't have room enough to receive it? I've seen it. Uh, this is the funniest thing. Uh, my, my wife I mean, she is excellent with money. But 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 I you know I just say this. But my wife is now making more money than I'm making. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm testifying to the goodness of God. All right, all right. <laughs> God just doesn't give it. God wants us to use our talents to move our talents to other people so that they can too be yeah. saved. Yeah. 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 All God is concerned about is saving somebody. Yeah. Yeah. He don't, doesn't care where you come from. Oh, it doesn't matter what you've done. I mean, I mean, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. God can save. The roughest person in this house. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you saw a thief on the cross. 
yeah. saying, remember me? Yeah. A thief yeah. on the cross saying, remember me. And this is all that God wants us to yeah. do. I gave you a talent. I want you to use that talent. And I want that talent that you use to be used so somebody else can come. Hmm. So, so after everybody came back, the one that had two, one that said, I have two, I, I talents, say, Master, you're, you handed over to me two, see, I have made more talents. His master said to him, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You have been worthy of a few things. I will make you I will make you in charge of many things. Then the one who had received the one talent, we had third, third one, three ones, two, now we're coming to one. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were harsh, a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow. So <laughs> he had a nerve to say. You are a hard man, and you gave me one talent. I mean, why wouldn't you think I could use more than one talent? And then you gave me one talent when God came up to him and told him there's something wrong here. He said, well, you gave me one to sow, and I did not I at least did not, uh, I did not use it, then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. I don't know if y'all, I, I know everybody knows. If you put, right, right. You get money on top of money. And so God said, I, I'm going to make sure that nobody, somebody come up and play because I'm getting, I'm talking. Don't come up and play. God wants you to use what we have, even if it's not a, not much. Man. And if it's you, Man. and it's one thing that God wants you to use, God expects you to, to, to make use of that so that one thing will become two things. And once it gets around to somebody else who catches it, then it becomes bigger. See, see, see we're, we're looking at we're looking at that, that one thing. All we're looking at is that oh, you gave him one. You gave him a, a coin, one. No, no, no. You understand? He gave you a coin to make some more coin. Can I say? God has brought us into the church. Yeah. Because God wants us to use the thing that he gave to us yeah. to give to somebody else yeah. so they too can be saved. Yeah. 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 Man, yes, sir. God expects, I better get behind this thing. I, I know you can say. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. I, I just get too excited. I, <laughs> all God is saying is, and this is the last man that comes said, well, you only gave me one, so I hit it. You hit it. Yeah, yeah. I just made sure nobody got it. No, that wasn't the reason I gave it to you. I gave it to you to multiply. That's why I, I gave it to you to multiply. I, I, you, you are, as, 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 as you know, a soldier. God wants you as a soldier to act like a soldier. You're not just sitting around somewhere. Yeah. Thank you. You're taking a bar. Yeah. You're going to a battle. Yeah. The battle may be hard, but God has given you uh, God has given you the, the right yeah. Yeah. and God has given you the ability yeah. to, to, to take your arms and yeah. do what you do what you need to do. Yeah. So that God's saying here, I ah, yes, maybe I only gave you one. Maybe it made you feel sour. But see, I gave you what I knew you could have. Yeah. And you didn't even do that. Well, and he says, so take the talent yes, as the one who gave it to the one 
talent. Well, for give, give give the talent that you have to the one who has the most talent. Yes. For all of those who have more will be given, and they will have a, 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 in abundance. Yes. But from those who have nothing, uh-huh. even what they have will be taken away. And for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where he will be weeping and where there will be weeping and gnashing. Yes, sir. Gotta close this. I've I, I read this as many of you have several times, but every time I read it, it touches me a different way. I, I mean, God gives you everything you need and you still will not give God not only the praise, but the assets. And the assets in this case is our people. God just wants us to bring peace. I understand. I, 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 I know how it is. I, I, I understand. But, but, but God wants us to tell people about Jesus. And he wants you to tell people who maybe feel that they're inferior they may feel that they're not like everybody else and that they feel that, that somehow that, that they can't do anything. Those are the people yes, you need to know. Everybody yes, needs to know that yes, God can use them some way or another. Yes, Understand. If he can use me, yes. he can show enough use you. Sure. Yes, sure so we're asking, we're asking, we're asking that we would do more and beyond than we've done before. I, I, I sold your eyes. I, I, you know, I, every time I just always think about. Yeah, you know, so I always think about. I always, I always think about this song. Man, he will step. He will stop anybody. I, I mean, you know, they, they may say, "Do I really know you?" But he knows what yes. he knows what God has put us here yes. for. God has put all of us here to do to yes. bring somebody else yes. to Jesus. Right. And I'm so grateful. Yes. God had to work with me a hard time, but I'm so grateful I came to Jesus. Well, right. Who? Yes. Yes. I want you to know this yes. that it doesn't matter. And, and, and God is good because God gives yes. us the, the talents he knows we can use. Yes. But God is good in that he even allows us to use what we have. Yes. It's time, it's, it's, time, I, I, it's time for us to give ourselves back to Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's time for us to reuse our skills to take them off the top part and, and use them. Not to just put them in there. And don't use them. God, God has called you not just uh, to hear a word. God has called you to do a word. Come on, preacher. Yes, sir. And, and I don't know why. I, I guarantee you some people may never come to Jesus, but I guarantee you, God is doing everything he can to everybody to make sure that they have the opportunity to come to Jesus. Yes. For me, I don't know about you. But I know about I know about us here. Yeah. I want to be a steward yes, sir. of Jesus. Yeah. I, I want to put myself out there. If if it's if it's even a dangerous place. Yes. So that's the reason about it, Jesus. Yes, sir. God has called me and God has called you to bring somebody, somebody. to Jesus. Yes, sir. God hasn't asked you to say, well, I don't think that person looks like he's going to come to Jesus. No. He, no, 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 no. All God has called us for is to come to Jesus. And he's called us to come to have others come to Jesus. Lord, Lord, yeah. we're so thankful. Yes. Number one, that you allowed us to be representatives 
of you. Not because we deserve it. Not because we've done everything right. Not, not because we're so, we know so much. It's because, Lord, you have convicted us that we're not here just coming to Jesus to come to Jesus, but we're also here to come to Jesus to go out and get somebody else. And so, Lord, forgive us. There are times when we even missed, uh, uh, walked over our, our, the person that's next to door to us. We wouldn't witness to them. So now I'm asking you, Lord, please, whatever you put me on this earth for, whomever you put me here to talk to, whatever you've done to bring that person to, to our door, I don't understand why, but I know this, that I need to tell them about the experience of Jesus. Tell them about Jesus who died on the cross. Down the cross for nothing he did, but for what everything for everything we've done. And so when this thing is all over, that this place, this, this church, this city doesn't have enough room to pull everybody in. And by your grace, Lord, we want to, at this point, continue to be the people who are telling others about who Jesus is. And when you do that, Lord, we will continue to give you praise and we will continue to listen to the direction you want us to go. Thank you, Lord, for being so gracious that you allowed us uh, so much time to, to get it together. But we know we can't get it together ourselves, but we can through the power of Jesus. And because we can do it through the power of Jesus, please, Lord, fill our hearts with the desire to find people who are lost and bring them to Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. I just want to make sure I don't know if there's somebody here who has not as of yet been baptized, uh, baptism is going down in the water. It is saying that I'm dying to self and I'm being resurrected to Jesus. Dying to self and being res resurrected to Jesus. So I just gotta, I gotta be clear. I don't, I don't know who everyone is here. I don't know where you're at. Some of you may have already been baptized. Praise the Lord. But there's somebody who maybe wants to come to Jesus, wants to have a relationship with him. And I just want to know, is, is there someone here this morning? He's want a clear relationship with Jesus. You just want a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus. Give you a couple of moments. I'm going to stay here. Man, woman, boy, girl. He will, he will stay, will stay, stay you.
Let us stand for the benediction, please. Jesus said himself in this gospel of the kingdom of God to go throughout the entire world for a witness to all nations and then shall the end come. Father, we thank you so much for the message that we've heard, the messenger that you sent, the words that has fell upon our ears and it entered into our hearts and minds. And Father God, by way of the Holy Spirit, may he lead guide and keep us in the ministry to fulfillment of the call that you have upon our lives. This is my prayer in the righteous name of Jesus Christ, the great prince of all order. Let us all say it together. Amen and amen. Thank you. You may be seated for a moment of meditation. Oh, <laughs> 